Hey there, Iacuni here. After the last of the Soviet lunar missions in 1976, no man or probe has visited our nearest neighbour for almost 15 years. In 1990, this streak was broken by a new player, Japan. On January 24th, 1990, they launched the Muses A spacecraft aboard the Mu 3S2 rocket. This spacecraft, later christened Hiten, named after flying divine beings in Buddhism, was to study dust in the environment between the Earth and the Moon. To this end, it was placed in a highly eccentric orbit, where it would encounter the Moon eight times. During the first flyby, it would deploy a small satellite, Hagoromo, named after the mantles Hiten would have. It didn't have any scientific instruments, but the goal was just to see if they could get something in orbit around the moon. By this point, only the US and the Soviet Union had ever put anything in orbit around something other than the Earth or the Sun. Observations from Earth could confirm Hagoromo's engine fired, but as the antennae on Hagoromo failed, its orbit was never verified, and the orbiter was lost. Enter stage left, JPL engineers Edward Bell Bruno and James Miller. Hey, what you got there? A failed lunar orbiter? Oh no! Anyway, here's a way you could turn Heaton into a lunar orbiter. Okay, bye, see ya! Uh, sure. Thanks, I guess. Huh. This could work. The plan they proposed was a low energy transfer to lunar orbit, which involved a gravity cyst off of the moon after which two small burns could place Heaton into lunar orbit. Instead, ISAS elected to make use of a ballistic capture, which is a maneuver which places the spacecraft into a temporary lunar orbit without having to perform any burns. Heaton would quickly escape and loop between the L4 and L5 points, looking for the Kordelowski dust clouds in these regions. After finding nothing, though these clouds have since been confirmed to exist, it would return to lunar orbit one final time. In April of 1993, it performed one last burn as a spacecraft was predicted to crash on the far side. This was done to make it instead crash on the near side to allow for more scientific data to be collected. At a tenth the mass of the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, it truly was the little orbiter that could. Not a very impressive mission by any means, but a landmark one for sure, and one to pave the road for future missions. Geoten specifically, as he then specifically tested maneuvers for the probe, which, until earlier this year, still provided data on the Earth's magnetic sphere over 30 years after its launch. And so, ISAS started working on their next mission Lunar A, a true lunar orbiter. It would primarily study the moon's geology photographing the surface and launching two penetrators, which would bury itself two meters into the moon to study it. Behaviour cells. It was originally supposed to launch in 1995. This was delayed in 1997 because the Mu-5 rocket wasn't ready yet. This was then delayed in 1999 because they wanted to change the separation mechanism for the penetrators, which was then delayed to 2002 because some of the materials began to crack, and then again to 2003 as the Mu-5 suffered a launch failure on the 10th of February 2000. And then it was postponed again to 2004 because Hayabusa was postponed due to a problem with the reactor control system, and then they couldn't get the problem fixed with the penetrators, and by that point the Mu-5 rocket was retired and the electrons were getting old, and so in 2007 they just gave up. And by this point, we would get a much better mission. Under development since 1999, on September 14th, 2007, JAXA launched Cellini later renamed to Kaguya. Kaguya was a science beast. The spacecraft itself had 14 science instruments, including cameras, altimeters, spectrometers, and more. Kaguya also carried two smaller satellites, Okina and Ona, which would help with measuring the lunar gravity on the far side, and the lunar limb, which is the edge of the moon as seen from the Earth. Kaguya's measurements of the lunar gravity are paramount for finding stable orbits, as the unevenness makes it hard to find a stable orbit. I'll link a Scott Manley video on the topic in the sources. Kaguya was named after the main character from the Japanese folktale, The Tale of the Bamboo Cutter, who was adopted by Okinawa and Ona after they found her inside a bamboo stalk. Kaguya also sent back 
beautiful videos and pictures of the moon and plenty more data to allow scientists to study all sorts of different features on the lunar surface. Kagiya was the first in a series of missions to the moon, followed by Chang'e 1, Chandrayaan 1 and the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, all of which started development in 2003 when Kagiya was originally slated to launch. The data Kaguya has collected has been essential for finding a landing site for JAXA's next mission, SLIM, which is the topic of either my next video or the one after. To celebrate the Artemis 1 mission, I want to make three videos in the month of November about Japanese lunar missions. The first was about past missions. The next two will be about Japan's participation in the Artemis program and future lunar missions. The order will depend on when Artemis 1 finally launches. Until then, please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!